Well, welcome back this week to an analysis behind the news. We see in the news, for instance, this last week that uh, Bloomberg, the mayor of New York, now that he's lost the soda war, is going to start trying to have a war against guns. And so he's raised $12 million to convince the American people that they need a background check. Now, that's not gun registration, you understand. Gun registration is when the government knows that you own a gun. A background ground check, let's see. Well, I guess they'd know that you owned a gun with that too, wouldn't they? So what's the difference? It's The only difference is in name only. A background check is as good as gun registration, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Concealed carry, any of that kind of thing, the government knows, believe me. Uh, we see also now that uh, the communist leader of Argentina in South America is now uh, got the parliament of Argentina to lower the voting age to 16. Isn't that nice? Now they can all go from the classroom directly to the polls and vote exactly the way the teacher wants them to. Oh, by the way, uh, also the, the thing that Kirshner is doing in Argentina is using the tax uh, investigators and the ability to advertise or not advertise in newspapers by the government to intimidate independent newspapers from criticizing the moves that she's move, uh, doing to move Argentina ever more, ever more into full 100% socialism. We also see uh, uh, a lot of things about Cyprus, uh, that the IMF and others are now going to help Cyprus because uh, after all they didn't like the first deal uh, whether they were going to take up to 10% of, of people's holdings or for the little people, they were only going to take uh, close to 7% of everything they owned and had put away in the banks. Well, I wonder if that wasn't a trial balloon to get people to stand still for a lesser included problem. And that is taking it from the rich and uh, just a snippet from the poor. And oh, by the way, they're not going to have to vote on this again because they've said that they already voted on it. So whatever deal they've come up with now, it has nothing to do with democracy or any of that pesky stuff that they, they do in, uh, in places in the Western Hemisphere. And oh, by the way, how many of you know uh, that Cyprus is led by a communist? He's like this with Putin. Uh, the Communist Party in Cyprus is a very influential organization. They're talking about the fact that the Russians don't like what Cyprus is doing with oil exploration off the, Cyp uh, the Cypriot shores because it might interfere with the monopoly that Russia has built up with supplying gas and oil to Western Europe. Well, they control Cyprus. Do you think for a moment, as you've been reading in the newspapers, that a third of the deposits in Cyprus would be from Russia if they didn't control that place? They wouldn't do it. Can anybody spell Russia, Russian mafia? That's what's going on. These are basically individuals who were trained and still operate in the Soviet secret police, the KGB. They're now called entrepreneurs. Uh, an entrepreneur is uh, somebody who goes out and establishes something on his own. These are people that were handed monopolies once the so-called collapse occurred in Russia. They were handed these monopolies and now they are the oligarchs. And they control the gas and oil into Europe. Uh, I believe it's called Gazprom. And uh, if you take a look at it, they literally have that gasoline all over uh, Western Europe. And uh, they, they pretty much are calling the shots. Uh, at any rate, another thing is that, uh, again, a third of the deposits are from Russia. IMF is going to help them out. Well, it turns out that the former head of the IMF uh, lost his job because supposedly he'd raped a, a, a maid in his hotel where he was staying. And so they finally dropped the charges against him, but in the interim, they put this woman in charge of the IMF. Well, now we find out that she's corrupt because she's been giving money to people very close to the former head of France. Uh, so that's the IMF, and that's the institute with your money and mine 
are going to help out Cyprus. Here's another one. Militant Kurds declare truce with Turkey. And they're flying all these Kurdish flags and, and everything else. And they say that uh, they're flying portraits of jailed Kurdistan Workers' Party leader Abdullah Akalan. Well, they don't show you what the flags looked like 10 years ago. The Kurdish Workers' Party flag 10 years ago was the hammer and sickle. And they've been at war with Turkey, now have declared a truce. So they don't tell you any of that. But you get the clue because it's called a Workers' Party. Uh, here we see, too, that our glorious, excuse me for the snide remark, but our victory in Iraq has produced what? The ability of Iran to fly over Iraq and fly arms into Assad of Syria. And now we're protesting this. Uh, we supposedly saved Iraq, and now they're allied with Iran to help Assad in Syria. Uh, we also uh, are saying that uh, we are going to pull our forces out of certain areas of Afga Af Afghanistan. We've declared victory. Now, interestingly enough, this little sidebar here shows us that this victory is enabling China to come in and run the first Afghan oil field. We are, we've already turned the oil, uh, the iron ore mines to the Chinese. Now they're taking over the oil fields in Afghanistan. What are we there for? It seems that the Chinese are picking up where we aren't, uh, at any rate. Uh, another one, U.S. to shift drone command. How many uh, from, the, uh, from, the, uh, from the CIA to the military? How, and this is supposed to be something good, that if we just take it away from the CIA and, and give it to the military, then we won't have a problem with the violation of any Bill of Rights and the Constitution and things like that. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that certain units of the United States military are detached and functioning as part of the CIA command. They've always done this. They did it in Vietnam. They always have, they don't have their own military, so that when they need a military unit to do some work, it's detached to the CIA. And that's probably what's going to happen in this case as well. They're not going to let those things out of their hands, believe me. Once people have power, they don't like to relinquish it. Bricks and mortar. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, the, the articles in the newspapers recently said that bricks was dissolving. Well, bricks, by the way, in case, uh, for those of you who don't recall, is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And this is a full-page ad out of the uh, Wall Street Journal uh, by the Chinese government. Uh, promoting bricks, that people should start trading uh, with bricks, and and uh, and it is a what I have always called it is the new Soviet bloc, uh, but the Wall Street Journal uh, doesn't put it that way. They let the Chinese write their own copy. Another thing that I caught my eye in the uh, the New York Times on Friday was that Chicago announces 54 public schools to be closed. Now, I mentioned the, this to you before, and this is being done under the uh, ostensive reason for austerity uh, and, and that sort of thing. Well, let me tell you, the plan of the socialist has always been to consolidate schools more and more, close schools more and more, get them further and further away from their parents and their neighborhoods. And now I know that the man who is the COO for the Chicago public school systems is a good conservative, conservative Republican. And he's probably doing these things uh, because he feels he has no other choice. But the pressures on that man and others to do these sorts of things ultimately are going to lead where there's one school, or in the case of Chicago, maybe more. But I do know that in some areas of the country, that is the plan by the local socialists is to ultimately form dormitories with one school, the kids get to go home on the weekends. That has always been a program of the socialists. Lastly, something that's creeping in more and more are articles talking about uh, the GOP needs a bigger tent. Uh, they need a, 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 
uh, what's next for the GOP, all sorts of articles trying to convince people that the Republican Party needs to move left. You know, they always talk about a big umbrella or that kind of thing, but it never seems to move right. It always moves left. It is a way of trying to get people to agree that uh, the Republican Party needs to moderate its principles, uh, needs to moderate its stand towards the Constitution. If you do that, then you can be elected. Well, if you do that, what's the purpose? You've lost your principles. You've lost your, your, your direction. Uh, the idea is to carry those principles into government. If you've already given them up in order to get elected, what use are you? None, really. And that's the whole point behind this thing. It's just another argument to move us further and further into socialism. Don't listen to it. Educate your neighbors. Get them involved. Make a stand. Uh, if you get enough people in your neighborhood doing that, then they'll elect the right candidates. Might try the John Birch Society to do that, by the way. Till next week, we'll see you then.